Hi, this is Takuma Nakata. I'm an interaction designer based in Kyoto. And uh, in today's tutorial, we're gonna learn how to make uh, this kind of visual. Um, and uh, yesterday, I released this tutorial called uh, Difference Between EX9 and DX11. And I was supposed to uh, create, add this tutorial at the end of the tutorial, but I didn't want my tutorial to be too long, so I decided to skip that part. So this will be the second uh, volume two for Difference Between EX9 and DX11. And in this tutorial, we'll be learning how to make a line visual like this one that you're seeing right now. And uh, it's an addition of yesterday's tutorial. So if you haven't followed yesterday's tutorial, uh, please follow that one. Uh, it describes all the technique that we're using today. And uh, to do so, uh, you also need to install Instance Noodle, which was also included in the, uh, yesterday's tutorial. And also the DX11, uh, DirectX11 packs. So please install those two to follow today's tutorial. Okay, so uh, let's get started. So this will be the scratch for the ratio today. And in today's tutorial, uh, the there's only one node that we're using and that's the most important one called a uh, line from to buffer, which I'm using it right here. And this is the one that does all the uh, magic. So let's get that one out. Uh, lines, line from to buffer. So what this thing is uh, does is it has two input called uh, from 3D buffer to 3D buffer. So uh, if you followed yesterday's tutorial, if you make two dynamic position buffer, then it would automatically connect the line between those two positions. So let's see how that goes. Uh, dynamic buffer. And then I'll just make a linear spread like yesterday. And then a cross. So I'll connect these two here, and then connect. Oh no. It has to be a position bus first, so it has to be a vector three join. So I'll add this to x y position and put it inside here. And just multiply this to ten. Okay. Now I already see uh, some lines, uh, but there's some part missing, and uh, that's because uh, the line from to buffer needs to know the spread count. And at the moment, there's uh, there's 300. There's supposed to be 300 points, but in default, it already only says it's uh, it has 64. So I need to make sure that this is in the right uh, number. So there you go. Now we see the right amount of uh, lines on the screen. However, the all the lines are. Uh, pointing towards the center, and that's because I haven't got anything on the th two 3D buffer. So I'll just copy paste this one and make another linear spread in the same position. Bang, it's all deleted. And that's because they're both in the same uh, position. So if I move this one, here you go. Now we see a line, a straight line connected uh, from one this position to this position. So yeah, this is already quite good. What I usually do is I try to connect different type of spread. For example, if I connect circular spread to this dynamic buffer and uh, make sure that we both have the same amount, which is supposed to be 100 per vector. So I'll just say 100 for the circular spread. And now I should see that it's outputting the same amount of, uh, uh, yep. The count is the same. So now all the lines are connected to the circle spread, a circle that I made with spread. So, yep, this is okay. Uh, if you want to make like lines from each position to, to, uh, to go to, how to say, for example, if you want this line to go here, you have to hand by hand locate each pos uh, vertex position because at the moment I'm just using this uh, circular spread, which I'm not giving any control for uh, in each, which position which vertex has to be. So that's why it's all mixed up. And there should be a way to, uh, how to say, to point 
each line to each uh, position that you want. But for that, you can't. I think you have to uh, do some tricks here, and I'm not gonna explain that for today. And uh, another spread that we have inside di uh, uh, VVV is this one called typo spread. And by using this and connecting these, just delete this one, and I'll type uh, VVVV and make sure that the spread count is 100. And now uh, I see nothing. And that is because font is okay, spacing is busy. I just make the width and the height smaller. And I think I should add spacing. Oh, and another thing uh, important when I'm doing this uh, uh, line thing is, uh, is uh, that to visualize position of uh, how to say these so to do so I often use a sprite buffer this one is also works with buffer so you just have to connect a buffer position to to this one so for example I want to visualize how this type of spread is actually creating a spread so I'll just add, connect this one here and uh, Sprite buffer to the layer position, and this one also needs a spread count, so I'll just connect this one from here. Okay, now I see why it was wrong, uh, weird, and that's because I think the height is too high. Okay, now it looks similar, and the sprite is a bit too big, so I'll make it smaller. Small. Okay, and I'd like the width to be, uh, yeah, okay, oh, this looks better, and then I'll make spacing. Uh, less. Okay, here we go. Now I see all these VVVV spread generated. Okay, and I can see that it's all connected to the right position. Uh, so by adding, for example, an LFO to this uh, phase, then I can actually uh, fast. 10 second this sort of so um like transition effect and also if i think it's too less so i'll just make it a bit more so now each of them should have 900 so i'll just add 900 here and now i get this really rich uh amount of lines and still working really smooth at least in my computer so this is the power of uh dynamic buffer and uh uh this line from to buffer inside instance noodle so if you're interested in creating some uh, visual like this please uh, try using instance noodle and yeah that was basically it for today at the end I'll, I'll introduce another one uh, so the problem with this line to buffer a node is that it doesn't have a shader so you can't really add a shaded line you can only get like simple lines and also we can of course color color this but if you for example want to have a line uh, shading for this line uh, you have to use a sprite but a spline buffer I think this one is also included inside instance noodle and what this guy does is I just click uh, F1 and what it does is creates a spline so this one is a spline and it has some spread uh, position I'll just make this one to one so it's creating a line from a certain spread so it's using circular spread and adding some random noise and that's how it's creating this uh, tube spline but for example if I change this uh, tube type this uh, tube square then you can kind of have like squared tubes so I'll add this one to that line to, to, to the one that we just made and make it shaded okay so let's try that out so um, to do so and this one uh, it's not like line from two buffer so there's no two input instead of that there's only one input so to combine two different dynamic buffer I use this a uh, zip oh wait it has 3d buffer Yeah, I can use this one, but I, instead of that, I'll just use zip3d because I'm used to this one. 
And what I'll do is I will connect uh, the vector out to to each input. And what it does, it, it zips both input and creates a zipped one. So this plus this is 5,400. And I'll add a dynamic buffer here. So dynamic buffer 3D. And then I'll connect this one to the control 3D buffer. And uh, I'll change this tech, uh, technical type to tube. And in here, it doesn't have a spread count input. Instead of that, it has three different input here, uh, spline count, control points for spline, and resolution. And this spline count is what we have to change because we need 2,700 splines. So just connect this one here. And let's see if it works. Oh, and this one needs a shader. So after you finish creating the spline buffer thing, it will have a geometry out. So here I'll, for example, add a fun point. And this should uh, do the magic. And I'll just delete this, this uh, line one. And I'll rearrange everything. Okay. And sprite buffer, I'll put the camera down. Let's put the node bigger so that I can get this guy above. Okay. So now I can see a uh, shaded uh, lines. But at the moment, I think the uh, uh, splines are too thick. So radius default, I'll make it to two. Okay, here we go. Now we have a shaded uh, lines. So now we can do a bunch of stuff. For example, adding gradient texture to uh to the fong point. What it does is now I can colorize. I, I made uh, this spline to be black here and to be bright here. But gradient, you can control the color inside gradient. For example, if I want to make it a different color, then I'll make the, the starting point white. Then I can easily change the look of, uh, of this spline as well. Okay, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I like this one, uh, but yeah, so this is what you can do, and uh, by playing with this, oh wait, why is it rounded? I don't need, okay, so control point needs to be two, because I only have two inputs, and if it's six, then it generates uh, the spline, like rounded shape, so if you don't want that, just make sure that this uh, spline count, a point per spline is two. And resolution doesn't really matter, even though it's two or it's been, you know, it's 64. What it does, what this does is basically, uh, it's this amount of resolution of this line. So now it's just a line, so you don't really have to care. But if you want it to curve, then you have to care about this resolution. As higher as it is, you can get a smoother line. Okay, I think this is basically it for today. I didn't have anything else that I wanted to do. But this is the way you can make a shaded line. So then that's what I wanted to share for today. It is, right? Okay. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you next next tutorial.